Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about a Petra maps and a Petra vectors. Of course, uh, Petra is a package in Trilinos, and PyTrilinos is the Python wrappers uh, to that package, and that's the context we're going to discuss it today and the examples we're going to use uh, um, for that. But the same ideas apply to the C++ version of, of a Petra, too. So what is a map? A map describes the distribution of global node indices across all processors. So I use the word node here, but you know, in the setting of, say, finite elements, this may be element. It, uh, this may be an element. It's just some uh, mapping from a global node system or a global element system or just, in general, a global numbering system to a local one. And so an example of that might be, say, for instance, if you had a one-dimensional bar that you broke up into some discrete points for computational purposes. And if the global number of those, say, went 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then say we split this up across multiple processors, so because we have an odd number here, the, the distribution will be, not be quite even. But say we split these up and distributed these nodes to work on processor 0 and these nodes to work on processor 1, then you might have a local node numbering scheme that goes something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2. So the map would be then this mapping between the global zero and the local. So you see on processor zero the map is identical, but on processor one the map is four to zero, five to one, six to two, or vice versa, zero, four, one, five, two, six. And so this is typically done because on processor we'll want to write some maybe four loops or something and that will want to loop over the global scheme. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. We'll want to loop over that in a general way across all processors, you know, locally. But then at some point, we're going to need to assemble or uh, bring, you know, part of the values that occur locally into some global um, array. And we'll learn about how we'll do that later. Uh, within the context of a Petra. But basically right now you just need to understand that a map maps the local, a local to a global node numbering scheme. Okay? Um, they're, they're, here I've listed four ways to construct a map. These are actually within the context of PyTrilinos. I think there's probably a few more uh, in, in the C++ version of Trilinos. But anyway, basically uh, you, the, the constructor um, what you'd use the, the word map and then the total number of global elements an index base this is typically zero or one it's it's what your global no numbering scheme you want to start from and then your your co communicator and what this is going to do is you, you be used to construct a map where the, the total number of global elements is split equally amongst the processors that are defined in the communicator um, if you don't want that equal split then you you can uh, each on on each processor define the number of my elements uh, separately or alternatively you can actually specify as a Python object or a list the, uh, the global uh, a list of the global element indexes and I have examples for these and this is just a copy constructor such that if you had a map and you wanted to make an exact duplicate of it um, you would use that one okay so here's an example and for this, we'll go ahead and go over to the terminal window to, to work on this example. So the first two lines ought to be familiar. We're going to import uh, a Petra from PyTrilinos and establish a communicator. And then uh, the, the, on line five there, I, I defined using the, the most basic constructor. Here I want 10 global elements with an index base of zero uh, and then as an argument, the communicator. I've defined it as STD map. That's only to just, you know, I could have just called it map, but Python actually has a built-in function called map, so I didn't want to, uh, lowercase map, so I didn't want to step on that namespace. So anyway, uh, 
if we run this code, say, on two processors, then we'll get this answer. And you notice they're not printed out in order. That's because, uh, you know, of course, these are run simultaneously, and we can't control what, what order they're going to arrive at, at the standard, you know, out on the terminal. Um, so if we go back, you could change, say, this to uh, 20 if you wanted 20 elements, and this to 5. So now the, the global node numbering scheme is going to start with 5 for some reason. Uh, and there you see that, so 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. And of course we can run this on, say, 4 processors, and we get split uh, amongst 4 processors. And uh, 20 doesn't divide by 3 evenly, but you can see that it'll handle uh, the odd split there. Um, so two will have the same number and then the third one will have an odd number. So another example, this is using the second type of constructor. In this example, uh, we're going to have a, uh, a different number uh, on each processor. So here I've defined a variable uh, that, that's the total number of global elements and then I'm going to say the number of elements on the first processor I want to be four. Um, and so then what I'm going to do is say the number of my elements on the first processor is equal to four, and then the number of elements on all the other processors is the total number subtracted by four, so 16 in this example, uh, and divided equally amongst the rest of the processors. Okay, so what this would, uh, if I ran this on say three processors, what I would get is, well, let's start. If I ran it on just two processors, I would have a split where the first four global indices are on one processor and the other 16 are on the second processor. Or if I ran this on three, then the first four would be on the first processor followed by eight and eight split equally among the second two. So this is an example of using the constructor where I'm going to specify the number of global elements, the number of elements on each processor, the base is zero, and then the communicator. And this is an example of that final one where here I'm going to explicitly give a Python list of indices and pass those into the constructor. So here I say my global elements, I define them through this conditional statement where the first processor is defined 0 to 4. And uh, in this case, this, this code will only really work on two processors. Uh, it's not a, meant to be a general uh, code, but uh, if we run this on two processors, then you'll see that we get the exact split that we defined. So this is most useful when uh, your problem has already been partitioned previously by maybe some preprocessor would partition or decompose your problem, and then you read it in in parallel already partitioned then you can simply take those partitions, assign them to the global indices, and construct your map. So, of course, we only want to construct maps so that we can do operations. And the Petra vectors are kind of the, the most basic data structure in which we would do an operation. They're, they're basically um, a data structure that are equivalent to or inherent from NumPy arrays. And, Inherent in in the in you know object-oriented programming speak means that a Petra vectors are NumPy arrays. So uh, anything any operation that you can call or or conduct any operation on a NumPy array you can also conduct on an a Petra vectors as well as several methods that are defined on a Petra vectors themselves. Uh, the difference is of course is that these vectors are distributed over the processors according to the a Petra map. Okay, the map that we just defined. And so uh, they do have, uh, they're hard-coded to type double. Um, if you want to use an integer type, uh, then you have to use an int vector. Um, unfortunately, there's no complex or floating or float numbers. You can, you can uh, all locally on the, po on the processor, you could say recast them, but you can't do any, uh, or you can't define uh, an Apetra vector to be a complex number at, at this point. Um, if you're a C++ user of Petra, then you want to look to the tpetra package for that functionality. But within PyTrilinos, all we have is doubles. Okay, and so there's several useful constructors. 
Uh, all, all of them, uh, you'll have to include the map. So the most basic would be then to just call vector, include the map. This is an optional argument that is automatically set to true. So it's just going to give you a contiguous array of data with all zeros in it when you define it here. You can also, instead of uh, just having zeros, you can include the array that you want right here. Uh, and that would uh, add initialization or at instantiation of the vector object. You, you would go ahead and specify the, the values that are going to go into it, uh, the non-zero values. And there's also this copy constructor. So if you had a vector and you wanted to make a copy of it, then you could uh, call it like this. So here's an example. Uh, uh, we start with an Apetra map, uh, the same one from the first problem. And then we define a, an Apetra vector x um, based on this map. And so this is all going to be initialized to zeros. And of course, since x is a NumPy array now, we can locally, on processor, define this as a NumPy array that ranges um, from zero to the number of my elements. So the number of my elements would be the local on processor elements. Um, and in, in this case, you can see what happens if you were to run this twice. And in this, in this case, I'm using it to actually show you what would, what would happen uh, because the local vector x goes from zero to the number of process the number of elements on that processor so if your number of elements on that processor go from zero to that number then th you could think of that as the local index of course an index is typically an integer and here they're doubles but nevertheless you can see essentially the map so here the, you're going to see what what's output when you run this on two processors uh, the a local global pair. And so 0 corresponds to 0, 1 corresponds to 1, 2 corresponds to 2, 3 corresponds to 3, 4 corresponds to 4. Of course, that's on the first processor, processor 0. And then on the second processor, the local 0 corresponds to 5, the local 1 corresponds to 6, the local 2 corresponds to 7, the local 3 corresponds to 8, and the local 4 corresponds to 9. So I basically just filled the Apetra vector with values from zero to the number of uh, elements on that processor. So this number of elements method is a method that's defined on a map. Okay, So I call it by saying std map is the argument number of my elements. That returns the local number of elements on that processor associated with that map. So here's a second example. In, in this example, I'm actually uh, going to define two vectors, but based on the same map. So I define a vector x and a vector y associated with the standard map. Okay, I basically do the same thing. So x is going to range from 0 to the number of on-processor elements. Um, so in this case, you know, if I run this on two processors, it's going to be from 0 to 5 and 0 to 5. And then y, I'm just going to, again, because y is a NumPy array, I can use these NumPy broadcasting features. So I'm just going to say x plus 1. So if x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, y is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Um, and then we can do some operations. So uh, I define a, a variable temp1, that's x dot y. So this is literally the dot product, x dot y. I can also define temp2 as the, no, as the uh, L2 norm of x, and temp3 as uh, the max value of y. So I'm just these are these are some operations that you can, um, uh, you know, conduct on a, a Petra vectors, or these are methods defined on a Petra vectors. And there's more of them, and I'm going to point you to the documentation to find out, uh, you know, the full list there. Um, now, one thing to note that, you know, of course, x and y are distributed across all processors. And I'm calling this, uh, you know, not, not on a conditional statement or whatever. So temp1 is actually going to be defined on every processor, um, although here I'm only going to print it out on the first processor. And so, uh, you know, if we were to run this uh, code, then, then this would be the output you would get, the, the three print statements there at the bottom. So, uh, you know, a Petra.com is, is we introduced in the last lecture, the introduction, but I didn't really talk about any of the methods. Uh, 
Um, but I just wanted you to be aware that there are some MPI style methods available uh, from from the Apetricon, most notably like a broadcast and a gather all. Gather all is important. It's it's similar to gather in that it's going to take um, you know basically Python objects which can be anything, uh, lists of integers, uh, strings, doubles, and it's going to gather them to every processor. So if you have a distributed list uh, of say integers and you gather them, that list is going to, be, or you call this command gather all, it's going to be gathered to all processors at the same time, and same for sum all, max all, min all. I also wanted you to be aware that there is uh, this get MPI com uh, sort of getter function that's defined on the communicator, and with that you can call any MPI for pi method that we've already talked about, So, and, and it would use the, the exact same ten syntax. Um, this is typically not needed. Uh, it's sort of only in spe very special use cases, but uh, Apetra gives us a lot of other options that, that, uh, to, to deal with these distributed arrays such that we don't typically need to do our own explicit MPI calls. So here's just an example. Uh, here I've just defined a, a vector x on every processor that ranges from 0 to 5, and then I'm going to gather them all and just quickly we'll go over to the terminal and if I run this then you see I'm only printing that out on one processor but uh, on, the, on the rank of the root processor but that gather operation has been conducted everywhere and you can see that, you know, for as many processors as I defined, I'll end up with that a collection of the list of, of 0 to 1 to 5 there. And so finally, I just want to point out that the Petra maps are ac actually, in they inherit themselves from something called an Apetra block map. So an Apetra map is a Apetra block map with a point size of 1. Um, so, again, if we go back to our, say, one, well, what started off as a one-dimensional example, if now instead of this being a bar, this were a beam, for instance, where now every point, uh, or every node, rather, is going to have not one, but two degrees of freedom. So if this were a beam, um, every node would have some, you know, transverse displacement as well as some angle associated with it. And so what, the way we might distribute this in the same way, we might send this group to processor 0 and this group to processor 1, but now we use a block map to define it where the, ele the element size is 2. So basically what we're going to have here is you know, global node numbers 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, each of size 2, and then they, the, the, the two points within each global node correspond to the two degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is sort of a, one way that you might use it as a degree of freedom manager. Um, anyway, it's just something I want you to be aware of. Same goes for a Petra vectors. The Petra vectors are a Petra multi vectors where the number of dimensions is one. So you might have a two dimensional array, you know, something like one, two, three, four. And 0 0.7, something like this. Uh, so you could have x is equal to this, right? And you can define a, an impetra multi vector uh, basically using a multi vector constructor where you'd have uh, basically the number of dimensions would be equal to 2 corresponding to here and here, okay? And so in practice what this really means for most of the cases is um, when, whenever you want to look up a method or you're trying to uh, figure out, uh, you know, a function to, that operates on an Apetra vector or an Apetra map, a lot of times those are actually defined on Apetra block maps or multi-vectors and that's because a vector inherits from multi-vectors, which means it can also use all of the functions that are defined on multi-vectors. So to give you an example of that, we used that 
number of my elements earlier in the in the block example. And if you go to a Petra map or the Petra map documentation, you know all the public member functions, which means the the functions or the methods that are actually defined and that you can call on an Petra map. Well, they're all right here, and and you don't see number of uh, you know my elements anywhere. And it's because it's actually defined on an Petra block map. So here's the inheritance tree. The Petra map inherits from the Petra block map. And if you click here, then you go down. Now you see a lot. So here's the public member functions. These are all constructors. Again, this is the C++ documentation, but it follows very closely in PyTrilinos. And if we go down, eventually you'll see number of my elements, number of elements on the calling processor. So this is where that is fine. And we, we, we called it on an Apetra map, but it's actually defined on an Apetra block map because an Apetra map is an Apetra block map. Anyway, that's all for this lecture. Uh, in the future lectures, we're going to talk about how we actually use these uh, Petra vectors uh, to do computations and how we can use some of the built-in features of a Petra to communicate values across processors when needed so that we don't have to make those explicit MPI calls.